What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the easiest way to generate all the art and metadata for your NFT collection, save a ton of time and money doing it yourself, even if you don't have any technical background or development experience. Let's jump into it. So I've seen a ton of suggestions inside the Discord of people asking, how do I generate the art and metadata for my NFT collection, especially if you don't have a technical or development background, what's the easiest and fastest and cheapest way to get this done? Obviously, we're all about moving quick and efficiently when it comes to building NFT projects. And as I mentioned in my last video, one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of projects do is they just move too slow. And the NFT space is constantly evolving and changing. So you can't move too slow, especially if you have a good idea and you want to execute. So in this video, I'm going to help you guys speed up your process when it comes to generating your art and the metadata for your collection. I've seen a lot of videos on this, but I'm gonna go in even more detail on how it's done, especially after you generate all the art and the metadata. And I'm gonna walk you guys through the entire process step-by-step, step, even show you guys some cool tools that you can use to generate simple collections. So briefly, I'm gonna walk through each step of this process that we're gonna cover in detail. But number one starts with the art and layering. Obviously you need to create the art you need to test all the different layers and make sure they work with each other and there's no issues. And the next thing is setting up your trait rarity. Obviously a key factor, especially if you have a collection of, you know, five, six, 10,000. Um, obviously you want there to be some sort of rarity disbursement. And third is generating your art and metadata. The fourth thing is using IPFS and storing all the image files in your collection on IPFS first. And finally leading into the last step, which is taking all the art that you just uploaded on IPFS and linking it directly into the metadata of each edition. If you feel a little confused or overwhelmed, don't worry, I'm gonna break down everything I just listed out in detail. And by the end of the video, you'll know everything you need to know when it comes to generating the art and metadata for your collection. All right, guys, so as you can see here, we've got all the art layers traits for the Magic Mushroom Clubhouse collection. Obviously a proud mushroom, but I wanna use this as an example for you guys. So first things first, you're gonna to need to work with your artist to create all the different traits and layers for your NFT collection. When you're done creating all the different traits, make sure to go back and test a bunch of different combinations of layers and traits to make sure that there are no issues, no overlap, no mistakes. It's easier just to get things done right the first time. But once you're done with that, you're going to need to organize all of your traits in individual layer folders and then write down which layers it goes by in order. So from back to front, you need to know how to organize all these layers. So first we've got here, you can see different backgrounds. Um, and then you can see obviously mushrooms, which would be second, which is going to be your body. It's different for different projects, but this is just how we have it set up for the magic mushroom clubhouse. Um, you can see all the different mouths, um, caps, eyes, accessories, um, pendants. Um, we've got all the different layers organized here. Also, as you guys can see, all these image files are PNGs with transparent backgrounds, which is important when it comes to layering these images on top of each other. So make sure to take note of that. So the next step after organizing all your layers is rarity and identifying which traits within each layer are gonna be rare and not rare or common or whatever you wanna call it. All right, so after you guys are done organizing all the different layers, what you're gonna to wanna to do next is work on the rarity. You're gonna to wanna to identify all the different traits you have within each layer and select which ones are supposed to be rare or not rare, common, or just like extremely rare traits. Obviously, this is up to you guys. It's obviously your collection, but something I do just to stay organized is within each layer, I'll create like three different folders, one for like common traits, one for rare traits, and one for like legendary, extremely rare traits. Um, and then organize all the different traits within that layer in itself into these rarity folders just to stay organized. It'll make a little bit more sense when we dive into it later. Obviously, I don't have that set up right now, but take that into consideration. It's just a good way to organize things when it comes to rarity. All right, so next step and what you guys have all been waiting for is how to generate the art and metadata for your collection. Obviously, I wanna show you guys a really simple way to do it, something that's very user-friendly, easy to do, fast, um, and efficient in general, especially if you don't have any sort of technical or development experience when it comes to generating. This will save you a ton of time and money because um, obviously you won't need to go out and search for a generator and pay someone to do it and then wait for them to 
complete all their other clients work and then get to your project. This is just a really simple and efficient way to do it, especially if you have a simple collection that you're putting together. But right here, we've got nft-generator.art. This is a no code NFT collection generator. Obviously you guys could probably read, but I'm not gonna go through their entire site. You guys can go check them out if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so as you guys can see here, you guys can log in with your MetaMask. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this really quickly. All right. So I've connected this account to my wallet. So this will then save everything that I'm working on. All I have to do is go back to this page and then connect my wallet and then it'll show all my saved work. So as you guys can see here on the left-hand side, we've got all the different layers, obviously click or drag and drop images here. Um, then we have details about the project. So project name, project description, total collection size, dimensions of your project. Um, and then all the different layer names. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this out. So we've got Magic Mushroom Clubhouse. Um, obviously in description, write out the description of your collection. In this case, I'm just gonna simply write test. Um, let's do a collection size of like 10. Next is dimensions, but the way that this works is the first file that you export, obviously, when you do export all of your traits, make sure they're the same dimensions for every single trait. Um, based on the first trait that you upload here will determine the dimensions of your collection. So let's go ahead and drag in all the backgrounds for this Magic Mushroom Clubhouse example. All right, all right. so I've got all the backgrounds open here. We're gonna go ahead and import these files. Um, so as you can see here, you see these little percentages up here at the top, so basically, this is saying that based on the, I believe like 11 or 12 um, traits in here, um, this is how the rarity is gonna be dispersed 8.3% across every background. We can change this later, but first things first, let's go through each of the layers, organize them, and then add all the files just like we did here. All right, so as you guys can see here, we've got all the different layers, and then we have all the different traits and art attached to each of these layers. Um, something I want to address really quickly is when you want something to have no trait at all so like let's just say for example obviously if you've seen the magic mushroom clubhouse collection you know that not every edition has a pendant now one thing i've gotten a lot of questions about is if something has like a none trait do you need an image file in there that literally is blank just a blank transparent png and the answer is no so as you guys can see here we've got one we'll go ahead and delete that and i'll show you exactly how to set this up um everything in red i guess there's an error when exporting these files um, we'll go ahead and just forget about this for now but make sure that everything is in the correct dimensions as i said before so the next step after you get all the art on here and all the layers organized is you're going to need to go to your rarity settings and this is where you can adjust the rarity for every single layer and every trait in here obviously there is an advanced setting we're just going to go through the basics there's a lot you can play around with here. But for example, let's just say we want to make all the solid colors, you know, more common. We can go ahead and increase um, the frequency that the solid background colors will appear. And then we can also lower the frequency of these pattern backgrounds to make them even more rare um, and so on. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to do this to every single layer. Um, however, we want the rarity dispersed, um, but something to take in consideration. Remember when I said for pendants, if you don't want every single trait to have one, when you go into the rarity settings, you're going to see rarity settings pendant at the top. This is showing that 100% of everything that's generated is going to have a pendant. Now you can go ahead and drag that down to 50%. So really only 50% of your collection will have a pendant. You could even drive that down even further. I think it was right around like 25%, 20% total had a pendant, maybe even less um, in the magic mushrooms. Um, and then we can adjust the rarity. Obviously we can make diamonds like the most rare. Then we have, you know, Bitcoin and then we've got Ethereum and so on. Let's even lower the percentage a little bit more. Um, obviously we only have 10 in this collection. So at 20%, we should have two when we're done generating this. Um, and so on. I'm not going to go through and update every single one, but in your case, do what's best for your project. But as you guys can see here, you see this little preview button. And basically what we can do is we can preview what we're generating. So obviously cute little mushroom here. Um, I would definitely test a few just to make sure the layers are set up 
correctly and properly um, before you go ahead and generate. All right, so after you guys are done with the previews and just checking to make sure that all your layers are organized properly, you can go ahead and generate the collection. Fair warning, if you're generating more than 10, um, this is a paid platform, so you are gonna have to pay but it really is reasonably priced and actually probably cheaper than going out and hiring somebody to generate and will save you a ton on time. Um, in this case, we'll just go ahead and do the free, but go ahead and click generate collection. It'll go ahead and generate, I guess, all 10 editions for us. And then it'll create the zip file. Um, we can go ahead and download. Great, so we'll go ahead and load this up here, but we've got inside of this sample folder, we've got all our different assets. So we've got all the different mushrooms that we just generated. Um, doesn't look like any of them have issues, which is great, meaning we organize all the layers properly. Now, underneath that, you're going to see metadata. Now, when we load this metadata, these are all in JSON files. So you may want to download like a text editor like Atom, Sublime, um, any sort of you know programming text editor. They're really easy to download. Most of them are free. Um, we'll go ahead and open one up here. So as you guys can see in one dot JSON, this is going to be addition number one of your collection name, number one, um, description test, um, your external URL. We'll go into that here in a second. It has to do with IPFS. Then we've got background. We got your trait type. We got the different values and everything, all the metadata properties when it comes to your edition. So that was a quick sneak peek into the metadata and we're going to jump right back into it. But first we need to take the images and the art that we generated for our collection and upload it to IPFS. So IPFS is obviously, as you guys can see right here, a peer to peer hypermedia protocol. Basically in simple words, this is where you're going to host all your art and your metadata for your collection. And then you're going to link it to your art when you do your reveal and so on. I'll explain a little bit more in detail, but you're going to want to go in here and click install and download IPFS. Obviously follow the instructions, depending on what type of device you're using, whether it's, you know, a PC or Mac. Um, but go ahead and download IPFS. All right, so once you download IPFS and you open it up, it's gonna look a lot like this. What you're gonna wanna do is jump into files. Obviously, I've got some files in here already, but then you're gonna wanna go to import and you're gonna wanna import the art folder. Now, as you can see here, we've got MMC test open, and this is the folder holding all the art we just generated for the Magic Mushroom Clubhouse. We're gonna go ahead and click open and import this file. So once your folder is updated, obviously go in here and check and make sure that you can preview your art, but go back to your files here. Um, you'll see your folder and go to the far right, click on these three little dots here, click on your share link and go ahead and copy this. This is gonna be really important when we go back and we want to generate and add these each individual image link into the metadata itself. Now, where this is going to go is going to be inside of image. So right here, we've got image, and this is where the link will go. You'll throw a little backslash in here, and this is going to be the official link to your art on token number one. So edition number one, we'll go ahead and copy this, and we'll throw that into our browser. And we'll go ahead and see if this art loads quick thing. Sometimes it does take a while to load the art, but as you guys can see here, the art has been generated from this link, meaning that the art has been hosted properly and inside of image is where this link will go. So what you're going to want to do is add that share link to every single JSON file. So you're probably thinking, how am I going to do this? If I have literally 10,000 editions, I got to go through 10,000 different JSON files and add this one link. No, there's actually a much simpler way to do this. And it's actually done through the NFT generator. So when you go to NFT generator.art backslash metadata, it'll end up loading this page. So what you're going to want to do is go back to that original file that we exported right here, MMC test. And we've got metadata one through 10. Now at the bottom here, we've got this metadata.json file. We're going to go ahead and open this one up. This is the exact same structure and layout as one.json. The only difference is this has every single edition's metadata in one file. Now, obviously we need to go in and we need to update this image link. So what we're going to do is go back to NFT generated art slash metadata, click on choose file. We're going to click on that metadata.json file right here. We've got magic mushroom clubhouse collection test. You can obviously add the collection website if you'd like, 
Then we've got image prefix. So this is important and this is going to be the name of each different of each edition and what is actually displayed on OpenSea. So in this case, it's going to be magic mushroom. That way, every single edition on OpenSea has like magic mushroom number one, magic mushroom number two, and then the token ID of that edition will be added to the end of this name. And then lastly, we need to update the image URL prefix. And this is going to be that share link that we copied from IPFS with all the art. We're gonna go ahead and paste that in there. Make sure there is the backslash at the end of this. Um, because after this backslash will be the file name itself for the art. We're going to go ahead and regenerate it. If everything looks good, we'll go ahead and open up this metadata folder here. Click on metadata and we've got one dot JSON. As you can see, we've got the IPFS linked here on every single one. And you can see the number here changing per edition, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 10. And we have the image linked to every single piece of metadata. So this right here is going to be the final folder that you upload to IPFS. This is what is going to link directly to your collection because it has the metadata for every single edition and the art for that corresponding edition linked inside of this metadata. So after you're done uploading that file and everything's on IPFS, you're going to go ahead and copy that share link again, which you're going to use when you update the URI to your contract and your collection. This is basically the link that you will push live and deploy when you do your reveal. But that is literally it when it comes to generating your own NFT collections, art and metadata step by step. Now, I highly recommend going and taking a look into NFT Generator. It's by far the easiest way to generate your art, especially if you don't have a technical background, you don't have that development experience, and it could save you a lot of time, but it works best for simple collections. If your collection is a little bit more difficult on the generating side, you may need to hire an actual generator or go ahead and join the Discord and chat it up with some developers. I'm sure there are people in there who would be more than happy to assist you on the generation side. This is what our community is all about. We're here to help people, especially those wanting to build and create in the NFT space. So I hope this video helped you guys. Definitely leave any suggestions you have below in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.